Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Today we're going to finally continue my How to Play GLA series. I believe we're here back with part number five. If you have not watched parts one to four already, then I have a playlist with them all in. I recommend you watch those first before watching this one. Uh, today we're going to focus on uh, GLA Stealth and we're here with a replay from the World Series uh, Grand Finals 2016. So four years ago and it's uh, myself versus Curious aka Tasmani. if you've been watching my streams recently uh he's playing under a name called huge hulk and there's been a few good games that i played against him even just yesterday actually we played an epic game on um forgotten forest or a version of forgotten forest um so we're going to basically focus wholly on gla stealth now whenever you go into a game you want to know all the advantages so i know in part four we focus on the advantages of all the different factions but for gla stealth i just want to show you a quick reminder so basically, it's probably easier actually to focus on the disadvantage first. The big disadvantage for GLA Stealth is the lack of tanks. So you see here, we've got GLA Stealth in this column here with all of the um, prices for all of the units. We've got the Scorpion. It's got a hyphen or a blank spot. We've got a Marauder with a blank spot and Scud Launcher with a blank spot. BB Trap doesn't really matter. But the, the, two, the, the main big one is the Scorpion and the Marauders also missing. So... Uh, versus head-on engagements versus enemy tanks, you're going to have a hard time unless you're smart about it and use some of your other units and your other advantages. So advantages for stealth, hijacker is stealthed and cheap. Um, well, it's not cheaper than vanilla, but it's stealthed, whereas vanilla um, GLA requires a general's point, whereas you get it for no general's point. Okay, it's a little bit more expensive for stealth, but it's pretty much you're only going to be making a hijacker when you stealth because it's only useful when it is stealthed whilst moving. That's a really, really um, <clears throat> a useful unit. Uh, also, other cheap things. So you've got technicals, relatively cheap. I mean, like for demo, it's more expensive. Uh, you've got bu uh, buggies, are relatively cheap as well at 900. Same as vanilla, but it's cheaper than the other factions. Battle bus is relatively cheap. And you've also got stealth tunnels and stealth stingers. <clears throat> and you basically want to be using all of this stuff to, to your advantage. But not taking head-on engagements versus um, tanks. So I'm going to show you a build order now that can work pretty much against any of the Chinas and any... Um, any USA, you don't really want to be doing it on GLA mirrors unless you want to try something a bit risky. It can work in GLA mirrors, but I'm basically going to show you it. it's a six worker build order rather than the typical five workers. Um, of course, the five worker build order and doing a tech RPG and whatever or a terror tech can work against Nuke, but I, I personally li like this build order I'm going to show you now. And um, it works really, really well against Nuke. It's a re really, really good build order if you ever get against Nuke, especially on Tournament Desert. But it works pretty much on every map. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to queue up six workers. Two are going to go down here. Uh, one's going to go down here. I actually start building that tunnel, but then I cancel it. Remember what I said about doubling up on tunnels on one side? Because I've got a tunnel over here. You don't really want to double up. So I think once I realize that tunnel's going to get up, I actually cancel that one. So I've got two workers here. One worker there. Uh, so that's three, four, five. And then um, did I count that one? I don't know if I can that one. Basically, you can do this on six. Cancel that and start collecting. Now I realize this tunnel's going to get up. I basically um, I've queued up a terrorist. I put him on guard mode in the middle. Did not find anything. So now I put him on guard mode over here. He does actually kill a truck in this case. You'll see he's got the moving animation. If I just pause it for a second, I actually can't see what's there. Although so I know there's a dozer gone here because I should be able to see the tracks. But I basically, there is there, I cannot see under this fog. But because I put him on guard mode, the terrorist knows there's something there. It's probably, you could say it's a bit of a bug, really. You shouldn't be able to do that because it's kind of like being able to see under the fog. You know something is there. And this terrorist is now going to walk over to the supply. Terrorist costs $200. Supply trip costs $600. Instant payoff for me. And also, he's only going to be collecting on one truck for the next, what, 10 seconds or whatever. Most important part of this build order is the two rebels that I've got queued up and the capture upgrade that I just building now instantly want to try and grab those oils and those two tunnels on the flanks are really really important for this build order i actually did not make an arms dealer at all until just like 10 seconds ago i made a fake on the cost 625 or maybe even less actually is it 525 it's really really cheap either way and then i finally upgraded it now i'm not going to make in any quads or any technicals you're probably thinking why i'm just going to pause but but what good are quads or technicals gonna do again okay against the flamer yeah quads might be able to take it out but what are they going to do against uh, battle masters which is going to be producing now so battle master you're going to it's going to take like three or four quads to to take down a battle master and you're probably going to lose a couple in the process as well so your friend against all of these units that nuke's going to be making are tunnels 
$800 a piece. Hijackers, for this reason here that you're about to see now. This is Taz's view. He doesn't, doesn't see any of these tunnels. <laughs> he doesn't see the hijacker either. I've taken his flamer. I'm now going to clear the middle. He actually evacuates here. And I'm now going to rent the safety of this building. So if he tries to chase it down, um, he would have lost to, to this bunker. So basically fortifying the middle. Now, what I'm focusing on here is rather than building quads, like I said before, they're, they're useless against all of these units. I'm dropping down more and more tunnels. Because the more and more tunnels that I drop down, it's going to take ages for him to clear them. Also, I'm getting free RPGs. So because I'm going to Fast Palace, you'll notice 5% at 2 minutes 45 is really, really quick. Or generally really, really quick. This all on the right side did fail because this gat has managed to take out the Rebel. Probably wasn't a paying attention there. I probably could have gone around the back and waited until this gat moved out. Or maybe I could have cleared that. But as long as you get one oil, this build order is relatively, relatively paid off. Because the amount of tunnels you've got, got out for this point in the game... I mean, try doing the five worker build order and see if you're on a palace and an arms dealer and got this many tunnels and a hijacker and got the oil at this point. You probably won't. You're probably going to have more um, faster and be able to tech up faster by doing this build order. So yeah, hijackers are your friend. Um, stealth tunnels are your friend. As I said, this can work against any China or any, um, any USA. Obviously, against the USA, you're probably not going to be doing hijackers. Maybe you can do one early on and you're trying to grab a dozer and get power. If you're wondering what power does, by the way, uh, power increases the build time for all of GLA structures. So you'll build a tunnel twice as quick. You'll build an arms dealer twice as quick. You'll build a technical twice as quick. You'll build a quad twice as quick. So it really, really ramps up the power of GLA massively if you get a dozer. I've made one technical here, but you'll notice I've not got the veterans here. I always said get that when you're doing the five worker build order. But now we're getting a little bit more advanced. <clears throat> In this case, there's no point in me getting it because I made it here. He's got loads and loads of units out. That veterancy is not going to do much for me. So that I'm not going to be 1v1 in... Um, I'm not going to be taking out trucks. I'm, I'm just using that literally to kill them a few Red Guard or maybe harass these trucks here. I'm not going to be 1v1 in Vs. I'm not going to be 1v1 in technicals because there's, there's obviously none on the map. I'm going to save those generals points for later on for getting the bounty and maybe rebel ambush and anthrax. Well, actually, anthrax I don't get, but... Um, what's it called? The sneak attack and stuff like that. It's more important rather than the veterancy. For, I'm only making one technical. Do I really need to spend a general's promotion for that one technical at this point in the game? No, I don't, because I'm getting a fast palace. I'm going to have buses. They're going to be far superior at taking out all of Nuke's units. I'm going to be getting a Jean and Kel, and that's basically the strategy you want to be always implementing really against the Nuke, because as soon as he gets on Battle Masters, which he starts dropping down a propaganda center very, very soon. Actually, I've got a Vet 3. <laughs> because he's left his trucks pretty much unattended there, and because I've just killed another thing there, I managed to scrap that up and it's caused loads and loads of damage just from that one um i did manage to let in some units here i don't think i was paying attention basically now that i'm on buses i'll get a jean and kel uh they're also your friend so in the early game tunnels hijackers rpgs are your friend but um in the later game battle buses really really good at taking out new nuke units for, for basically free unless he's got ecms in the mix uh, and overlords because now um, an Overlord, one of, one of the most powerful tanks in the entire game, I think, on the... An Emperor Overlord can, can take that out, or a, like, a Vet 3 Marauder. But obviously, we're... We are, um, stealth. Uh, if you're wondering why that hijacker was detected, Black Lotus detects stealth. Um, but basically, I don't think we really need to go beyond this point, because, um... From this point, I'm gonna go Jean and Kel. I'm gonna use the Battle Busters. I've got most of the map. I've got my oil. I actually managed to get his oil as well. This supply from him is a bit poor, to be honest. But basically, this is the point you want to be getting to as, um, well, as as any GLA, really. If you're, if you're against the USA, you want to be making buggies instead. If you're ever against Nuke, which obviously this replay is, you want to be making Jean and Kel and buses. Um, and that pretty much goes for any of the GLAs, really. Um, yeah, Jean and Kel and buses are your friend, definitely, against, uh, against Nuke. And one thing you can do, I'm just going to pause here so we don't get distracted. One thing you can do when you made a Jean and Kel, you can also make two barracks to try and fill these buses up faster. But when you make um, a Jean and Kel, you can obviously snipe the overlords and any surrounding infantry. You can then drive the bus towards the overlord. Obviously, you don't want to try and lose your bus, but if, it, if it's available, drive your bus towards it, evac one of your um, one of your RPGs and get inside of the uh, the overlord. You can also use um, you can also use uh, what was I going to say? Obviously, hijack is and oh yeah, Re rebel ambush. You can snipe the overlord. And then use Rebel Ambush, which I think I might do a little bit later on here. What I've done here is to send this Rebel. I think it came from the right, or maybe it just came from the left. 
But you'll see Stealth Rebels, actually. This is another good point. I didn't really mean to include in this video, but it's really, really useful. Send it into his base. If he's got no stealth detection, it's a massive, massive scout. So I've seen all of this, and you see the range on, on the Ranger. Uh, sorry, not the Ranger, on the Rebel. It's absolutely crazy. It's stealth, so he couldn't see that until this point. But what I've done there, and this is another very valuable point if you want to move up in the in the like pro scene or you want to move up in the ladder or whatever is whilst he's distracted or whilst he's fighting somewhere else even if that rebel goes down when he gets a warning saying your building is being captured at the same time he's fighting he's massively distracted he's overwhelmed or whatever that's he's either going to do one of two things either his propaganda center is going to get captured because he's not heard it or reacted to it in time or he's going to take some micro away from this i'm going to win the engagement and maybe a little bit better i might take out a few more units or maybe even win the engagement altogether because he's busy over here micro in a truck so in this case he doesn't micro this at all and i get his propaganda center and sell it and i'll get a thousand dollars for that as well she's having to rebuild it that would probably maybe he was nervous here or maybe he was just overwhelmed by having to micro two things or maybe he just didn't get the notification or i don't know whatever <clears throat> but um yeah really that was just a distraction. But now my Rebel's still there, and it's still providing a massive scout. So does he... He doesn't even make an outpost, so... I don't know if he's playing his A game here, but... <laughs> you get the gist, anyway. Uh, what else was I going to cover? Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to jump into a replay now. I mean, I'm going to jump into a skirmish. Okay, so we're jumping into just a sandbox mode, and we're going to make uh, six workers here. I don't know if I said six or seven workers before. I'm going to do a fake barracks. The uh, first worker is going to build the barracks. Second worker is going to go over here to the enemy oil. And this next worker is going to go over here because they're the two most important workers. Next, I'm going to upgrade the barracks with uh, B as the hotkey. F is for fake buildings, by the way. R is for real buildings. Uh, T for terrorist. Uh, with two rebels, capture upgrade. What you can actually do is seven if you want. Put that in guard mode over here. Now what you can do here is either send that to the tunnel. So this one here is just going to build a tunnel. Do not hurt me. Uh, and that one's going to go over to your oil. The reason this one's going to go here is because it'll get up faster and safer by going this way. If this tunnel's definitely going to get up, you can also skip this tunnel or build it, whatever you want. Terrorist didn't find anything, so I'm going to put him on guard mode over here. You can either put two inside of this one building or that, put that one back there, whatever you want to do. Get some supplies. Always want to be on loads and loads of workers. Uh, one inside of there. Get the rebel out. Uh, more tunnels. You see, I've skipped the arms dealer completely. Always want to have all your workers doing something. So the only two workers I've got free here at the moment are those two. As soon as that one's uh, available with $800, I'm just going to build another tunnel. Oil capture at ASAP. I think I delayed a little bit there because I'm talking or whatever. Um, as soon as I've got another $800 doing that. Whilst I'm doing nothing, I'm just checking around the map, making sure I've got plenty of workers. You always have five or six workers. And basically, that's the opener. From there, when I've got the money, or you can actually probably skip that tunnel and make a hijacker first, or maybe you can skip that tunnel and maybe you can make a little faster hijacker. I think in, in that game we just watched before, I skipped that one and I made a faster hijacker. From here, you can even just get... Uh, I would probably get a fake arms dealer at this point. Build even more tunnels. Just keep building tunnels. If, if you're against like a China or a tank, your friend is um, our tunnels and hijackers. I'm going to keep up another hijacker. Hotkey for hijacker is I. I know that because I hover over the hijacker and this little blue box over here that disappears when I put my mouse over it. You see that I is highlighted in yellow. You can put hijackers on guard mode by pressing G. And you just click there. As soon as the flamer goes near, the hijack will run if, it, if it's inside of that box. The circle, even. And then basically, you just keep creeping forward with tunnels. And at which point you want to build a palace? When you're confident you have enough tunnels, just drop down a palace. Okay, three minutes nine. It's not the fastest in the entire world, but it's still pretty quick. If he's playing super, super defensive, you can you can adapt. Maybe stop making the hijackers. Maybe you can just expand straight to a fast... Um, fast supply there 
basically, yeah, you can do this against any of the Chinas. Works best, I think, against Nuke. It also works against Tank. China Vanilla, you can do it against as well. Although, I think this is... I don't know if you could say this risky. I think if versus a China Vanilla, you're probably safer doing the five worker build order and trying to do a tech RPG. But versus like a nuke and a tank where you know they're going to be making lots and lots of tanks. Because against China Vanilla, he's going to make Gats and Outpost. Now, Gats and Outpost can detect stealth. So your hijack is not really going to work that much. But um, yeah, it can still work. And against any of the USAs, obviously your hijack is not going to work getting Vs. But you can actually try and get a dozer. And as I said before, all your stuff will build twice as quick. Pro probably would only stick with one hijacker or maybe two at the very maximum against USAs. And if it gets detected, make sure you move out of detection if he's got like a drone here. If, if that tunnel's being revealed, you probably don't want to queue up a, a hijacker because he's just going to see it. He's going to know exactly what's going to come and he's not going to let you get... Um, he's not going to let you get a dozer, so yeah. Um, but yeah, basically that can work on most maps. I think I already have a video on that exact build order. I'm just because I'm focusing on stealth, it's a really good general to do it with. You can do it with any of the GLAs, but with GLA stealth, it's particularly good. Uh, we are going to jump into another replay now. Got some replays lined up for you. So we're going to jump into replay two, which is here. And in this case, we've got a different matchup. We've got GLA stealth versus um, Hawkey's uh, GLA tox. This time I'm on the top. And remember, I've got no tanks, um, whereas Tox has very powerful tanks. It's got Scorpions that are relatively cheap, like 650 apiece, but they also fire Toxin shells, so I can make as many tunnels and RPGs as I want. But um, the RPGs will just go down to the tanks as well because he fires Toxin shells. It's actually quite imbalanced the way they just clear up everything. So against like the other GLAs, I think Tox is considered the strongest by far. Uh, the terrorists also for um, GLA Tox also do more damage. <clears throat> rather than uh, slightly weaker for the GLA stealth. But at this point, you, you need to get a good advantage early on. If you're stealth against Tox, you need to get an advantage early on. So what I'm going to do here is actually I've done the five work... Sorry, I've done the four worker build order. So what I've done here, I've skipped this tunnel over here. I've done four workers. First terrorist is going to go to the middle on guard mode. And in which case, I've found a tunnel. I think I get the free kill on this. Free kill. So Hawkey's lost $800 there. Big mistake from Hawkey. These are replays, by the way, I think from like maybe 2015. I think it was a Premier League between all the experts. I think I actually won the series. I came joint first with size. Uh, but Hawkey, a very, very good player. Can't remember my overall score against Hawkey. I think it was like 4-2 or something. And this was, was it the first game? I think it was the very first game, actually, yeah. The very first game. So I've done four workers. The reason I've done four is because I've saved $1,000 by not sending the worker here and also not building that tunnel. So the tunnel's 800 the work is a thousand. Sorry, not a thousand. <laughs> Two hundred. That saved a thousand dollars in total. And instead, I've queued up five terrorists, which cost a thousand. And then I'm going to build a technical first. I'm going to go straight for a TNT. Five work. Five terrorists will kill this past the hole. So you see, I'm going to go straight in, fast aggression, because I know if if I leave Hawkey. He's going to probably get a second arms dealer, maybe even a third arms dealer. He's going to pump out scorpions. And how the hell am I going to hold against that many scorpions with um, with just tunnels? Okay, the occasional hijacker might be able to turn the tide of the battle. But against a top pro, you're probably not going to be able to hold. So you need to get some kind of advantage early on. Um, in this case, I'm going to go for a TNT. I probably would always recommend that. Obviously, you don't want to do the same build order every single time against the same player in the same matchup. Because you, you will become predictable. They will learn to expect it. He could maybe do a fake and then drop down a Tox Tunnel here and maybe save it or whatever. You want to vary it up. But in this case, we only play one of this Stealth versus Tox. And I want to try and get the advantage early on. So I'm going to go for a TNT. So now I've killed his War Factory. Now I want to capitalize on that. So uh, I, don't, I, I really don't want to let this get to the mid game. Late game, I will be all right when I've got buggies and stuff like that and the Stealth Tunnels like I might have mentioned earlier. Um, Busters and Stealth Tunnels also work very nicely against Tox. But kind of mid-game when he's got a massive amount of Scorpions, I'm going to be at a real disadvantage. He's, he's also gone for a quick order build here, by the way. Probably similar to what I just showed you before. Although I think he did an Arms Dealer as well. Just didn't do as many Tunnels. So I'm capitalizing here. I, I think... Oh, I, I thought that was a real, actually, in the game when I played this. But uh, actually, it's a fake. I know I've got the, the army advantage at the moment because I've got t technicals out, whereas... He's had to rebuild that, which has cost him money. He's actually building another one over here. So he's going for the two arms dealer. And he's going to be eventually pumping out scorpions. But I managed to finish this game quick just by capitalizing on killing that, um, killing the wolf battery nice and early on. Managed to win the game there. 
The, re the way I win that is just by going fast aggression, getting the advantage, and then capitalizing on it. Don't take the pressure off. I do not want to let that game... Let, let's say that terrorist, um, the terror tech at the beginning failed. He probably would have just won the game because he's just going to pump out scorpions. He already had the oil. You do not want to be here really on head-on engagements with scorpions. And if he, if he does get to that point, you want to hold him back as long and as long as possible with as many tunnels and as many hijackers as possible and then get a fast palace. So 4 minutes 29. It's a relatively fast palace. Not that fast. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically, in the, in, the, in the super late game, that's where you're going to have a bit more of a chance rather than the mid game. I wouldn't say you're going to have the advantage because like to Tox Rebel Ambush is still super powerful. Anthrax Bomb is super powerful. The Scorpions are still very, very strong when he does like a sneak attack in the back of your base and the buggies can't get the range or whatever. But in, in that particular matchup, you want to use some fast aggression. Uh, I wanted to keep this to 20 minutes. I know we're running slightly over. But I just want to show you one more thing before we finish this with stealth. Um, I could probably talk for hours and hours, but I want to try and keep these to like 20 minutes. This is a game we played yesterday on a uh, live stream or maybe two days ago, whenever you're watching this. Um, so um, I'm playing with God's Clan. So I'm at Odin, which is purple. I've got Thor, which is Google here. It actually disconnects in a minute, leaving me and Boyka, which is God's Raw on the right, leaving us with a with a 2v3, which I'm getting a bit fed up with, to be honest with you. But in this in this game, if you watched on stream, I said I'm going to do something crazy. So the, what, what am I going to do? Probably, I don't think I've ever done this before. I go for four supplies. Uh, I actually messed that up a bit. But the reason I've gone for four supplies, I'm GLA Stealth again. <laughs> I'm going for four supplies and oil capture, by the way. I forgot about that. But the reason I'm doing it, I can stealth buildings. A massive, massive advantage for stealth. Stealth that, stealth that. What can the enemy see? Well, they can't see anything because the fog's there. But what can they see now? He can't see it. They can't see anything. They have no idea that I have two supplies there. And actually, I see this terror tech coming now, or what, whatever it is. I stealth that. I've stealthed. This is a crazy build. I'm not saying do this every single time, by the way. But what I'm saying is my whole base, everything that I've got on the map now is invisible, apart from where they're scanning here with a drone. That's invisible. They don't know I've got it. My barracks is even invisible, which, <laughs> again, I said this is a weird build order. What I'm saying is you can build fast self-supplies in, in places and the enemy won't know about it. So another good place is like on Gorge Drought at the bottom left. You can do a self-supply there. Um, or, or on the right side... Basically, you can you can do it on all kinds of crazy places where the enemy won't expect. Maybe I should, maybe I could do it like back here, um, and stealth it. The enemy has no idea that I've gone for this four four supply crazy build order. But once that pays off, you see the amount of money that I've got. Uh, where are we going? I can now I've now I'm now four supplies, two oils, because this has managed to hold with the stealth tunnels and the, and this. Uh, oh, I've got a bit of help from my mates, but basically these these stealth supplies. Um, really, really powerful. Also, if you expect a terror attack from like another GLA player, so for example, let's say Orange was going to terror attack me at the beginning. Let's say I already had my arms dealer up. Stealth that as well. Then how the hell is he going to hit it with a with a terror attack? Unless USA scans it, they're not going to hit it. So basically, a stealth buildings are your friend. Also, super, super late game when you want, like this game does go late, by the way. When um, you want to hide your markets. I'm not saying do it on every single building all the time because it is expensive at $500. Um, and for like every five buildings you stealth, you could build another another black market. So you don't want to be doing it all the time. But when you want to hide like your crucial buildings or in certain points, like look in the middle now. Right, what can this guy see? Nothing. <laughs> he can see that damaged tunnel. You can see a bit of smoke. Oh, actually, you can't see the smoke. He can see one worker, a damaged tunnel. They, hasn't, they have no idea about all of this stuff. They have no idea about half of this stuff in my base either. So uh, GLA Stealth is good for being sneaky, exactly like GLA should be played. This is where Google are disconnected, by the way. <laughs> we do go on to lose this, but we do put in a super, super good performance. But yeah, basically, if, if Google hadn't disconnected, that that we, we would have won this game. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very strong. But yeah, basically, the, the tip here is fast stealth supplies in sneaky places where the enemy is not going to expect. There's no point... There's no point... I know, I know I've stealthed it here, but there's no point really stealthing your main supply because the... If you're trying to hide one, because they know, they know you're going to have a supply in your main base. It, he's still going to drive around with a technical, trying to find the workers. But like, for example, let's say there was a hidden supply like back here, and you did a supply dog there and stealthed it. Chances are they're probably not going to know about it. They're going to scout, see it's not, see there's nothing there, and they're going to forget about it. So stealth supplies are also your friend, but also stealth palaces are very strong as well. And let's say you have, um, for example, tech RPGs, and you come across a palace and you start firing at it. 
if that stealth building is being repaired by a worker, the um, the invisi invisibility cloak will still work. So, for example, even though they're hitting it, the building will still appear, appear invis invisible and they won't be able to see how much HP they're hitting off it. So another very, very pro tip. Always want to be repairing your stealth buildings that can save you save you some games. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking for a while now. I think I've told you most of the stuff I know about um, Gile Stealth. But just remember, if you go back to the rewind to the beginning of this video, and remember your advantage is your, your stealth buildings, your stealth tunnels. Um, the lack of tanks is your big disadvantages, but your hijackers. Um, yeah, mainly your stealth tunnels, stealth palaces, stealth buildings, fast stealth supplies. You've got so many advantages with GLA stealth. So, um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hope you enjoyed this um, part number five. I will be doing a USA and a China version, but I'm going to finish this GLA series first of all, moving on to some of the other factions. Um, so, yeah, GG's and cheers for watching.